Section 4.8, Newton's method. Say we have some function, like uh, something like this, where it goes and it intersects the x-axis over there, and it has some sort of root. If it's a quadratic or a cubic or a quartic, then we can use a formula to solve for the root. But if it's a degree five or higher polynomial, or an even crazier function, then we have no formula to solve for the root. So it would be nice if we could somehow uh, approximate it using calculus. So if we take a look at, let's say, a nearby uh, x value, let's call this, uh, say, x1, then we can look at the y value over there. So that would be f of x1. So this point is x1, f of x1. And I could draw the uh, tangent line through that point. The tangent line through that point will hit another x value on the bottom over here. We can call that x2. And so, uh, solving for that point is actually pretty easy because if we have the equation for the tangent line, we just have to plug in y equals 0. And solving a linear equation for a single x value in y0 is pretty easy. So let's see if we can write out the equation for the tangent line. Well, that's y minus the y value, which is f of x1. And that equals uh, the slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative at x1, times the difference in the x values, x minus x1. We would like to know what the uh, value of x2 is, that close by root, or pseudo root, because it's just going to be an approximation. So we plug in 0 for y, and we keep f of x1. And then we keep f prime of x1. And we plug in the uh, x value that we're looking at, x2. So then we solve for this. What we do is we, um, let's see, we have minus f of x1 equals f prime x1 times x2 minus x1. So we can distribute the f prime. And then we want to get uh, x2 all by itself. So we add f prime x1 times x1 to both sides. So we get um, f prime x1 minus f of x1 equals f prime x1 times x2. How about I write that? f prime x1 uh, times x1 minus f of x1 equals f prime x1 times x2. So all we have to do is divide by f prime x1. So that'll end up being x1 minus f of x1 over the derivative equaling x2. So if we were to do this uh, entire process again, we would again look at the point above, draw another tangent line, and that would get us even closer to the root that we actually want. And then we could do that again, and again, and keep drawing tangent lines as we get closer and closer to r. So this entire process of keep drawing tangent lines, keep looking at where those are 0, and each of those x values that make that y0 for that tangent line getting closer and closer to the root is called Newton's method. We let xn be the nth approximation of the root r for a function. Then the next approximation is equal to the previous one minus the y value over the derivative at the previous approximation. So let's do uh, an example of this. We'll start with uh, x1 equals 2 and try to find the third approximation x3 to the root of the equation x cubed minus 2x minus 5 equals 0. This is actually the uh, polynomial that Newton chose to illustrate his method. By the way, notice that if we look at Newton's method, we're dividing by the derivative. So if the derivative is 0, the method fails. If the derivative is um, near 0, the method can also fail, and in a couple other cases. So you do have to be careful in, a certain, in certain situations. But let's go back to our example. Let's let f of x be equal to x cubed minus 2x minus 5. So then our derivative by the power rule is 3x squared minus 2. 
So we write out Newton's method xn plus 1 equals xn minus fxn over f prime xn. So that means that this is equal to xn minus, well, f of xn is you just plug in xn over here for these x's. So that's xn cubed minus 2xn minus 5. And then for the derivative, we plug in xn over there. So that's 3xn squared minus 2. Let's start with uh, n equals 1, because we want to get up to the third approximation. So for n equals 1, we have x2, our next approximation, is equal to x1, our previous one, minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. So that's if we plug in x1 everywhere, so that's x1 minus x1 cubed minus 2 times x1 minus 5 over 3 times x1 squared minus 2. Okay, so that's uh, 2 because we said x1 will be starting with 2. So if that's our initial approximation, we plug in 2 and cube it, and then we get 2 times 2 minus 5 for our numerator, and 3 times 2 squared minus 2 for our denominator. Simplifying that, we get 2.1. So this 2.1 is x2, right? That's the x2 that we started with. So we can plug in n equals 2 now to get x3. So for n equals 2, we have x3 is equal to x2 minus x2 cubed minus 2 times x2 minus 5 over 3 times x2 squared minus 2. We no longer care about x1. We only use the dx2. So that's 2.1 minus 2.1 cubed minus 2 times 2.1 minus 5 all over 3 times 2.1 squared minus 2. That ends up being uh, about 2.0946. Turns out that this uh, approximation for the root is actually accurate to within four decimal places. So uh, Newton's method is pretty cool. In fact, this is um, pretty much the method that most calculators use when they're calculating roots for polynomials using a computer algebra system. They don't use the exact Newton's method, but they use a variation of it. In our previous example, we said that um, our root would be accurate to within four decimal places. In general, if we want to try to find a root accurate to, let's say, a, a n number of decimal places, or we're already using n, uh, how about m number of decimal places, then what we'd do is we'd keep using Newton's method until we get subsequent roots that start matching for those m number of decimal places. And then once we get that, we'll say, okay, that's it, we can stop, or we're sure that this thing matches to as many decimal places as we want. So for this example, we're going to try to find um, the sixth root of 2 to 8 decimal places. So we need to find a function to use Newton's method on. And then we need to keep using Newton's method until we get two roots that match to eight decimal places. So for our function, how about we let f of x equal uh, x to the 6 minus 2. Because the root of that polynomial, x to the 6 minus 2, is uh, exactly the 6th root of 2. 6 root of 2 is 6 minus 2 is equal to 0. So when this thing equals 0 is when x is equal to 6 root of minus 2. If we look at the derivative, f prime of x, that's 6x to the fifth. So we have, at this point, everything we need to use Newton's method. So xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn over the derivative. 
And in this case, that's equal to xn minus xn to the 6 minus 2 over 6 times xn to the 5th. So we can uh, ironically use a calculator. If x1 is equal to, well, let's see, what would be a good approximation? Well, not a good one, but at least some sort of approximation. Well, plugging in 2 here would make this thing way too big. 2 to the 6 minus 2 wouldn't even be close to 0. So a good round number that's, I guess, the closest by what we can get is 1. 1 to the 6 minus 2 is minus 1. That's pretty close to 0, so it's a decent way to start. So let's let x1 be 1. Then x2, if we plug in 1 over here, 1 over here, and 1 over here, ends up being 1 minus 1 to the 6 minus 2 over 6 times 1, which is about 1.1666666. 1 and x3, if we plug in x2 to that process, we do it all over again, we get that it's 1.1264367. 1 we plug in x3, and we get that x4 is 1.1224667. 1 then we plug in x4 to get x5 as 1.1224627. 1 and if we plug in to get x6, then we also get 1.1224627. 1 Since those agreed to eight decimal places, we say that the sixth root of two is approximately 1.1224627. 1 accurate to within eight decimal places. Let's find correct to six decimal places the root of the equation cosine x equals x. So let's write this in standard form as cosine x minus x equals zero. So that tells us we should do f of x equal to cosine x minus x. So the derivative f prime of x is equal to, well, derivative of cosine is minus sine, and derivative of x is minus 1. So let's do Newton, Newton's method. We've got uh, xn plus 1 equal to xn minus, in this case, cosine xn minus xn over minus sine xn minus 1. So that's xn plus cosine xn minus xn over sine xn plus 1. So we have uh, Newton's method evaluated for in general. We need to find a starting root approximation. So how about we take a look at the graphs of these guys. So if this is y, this is x then we can say that that's cosine. So over here is pi over 2, and over here is pi. And then we need y equals x. Where they intersect is where our root is. So here's y equals x, and here's our root. So it looks like the x value for our root is close to pi over 2, which is around like uh, something like 1.6 or whatever. So let's choose uh, x1 equals 1. That's pretty close by. So if x1 is equal to 1, then x2, we plug in x1 equals 1, so 1 plus cosine 1 minus 1 over sine 1 plus 1, and we get that x2 is approximately 0.7. Five zero three six three eight seven. Plugging in again, we get that x three is about point seven three nine one one two eight nine. X four is about point seven three nine zero eight five one three, and then x five is about 
0.739 Okay, so we could say that the root, which it looks like is accurate actually to eight decimal places, but we only need six, will be uh, 0 0.739085. Uh, observe that we chose x1 equals 1, which is kind of far from 0 0.739085. If we had chosen a closer x value by zooming into our calculator, and maybe, you know, seeing it, or if we just had some more intuition to get closer, like let's say we chose x1 to be 0 0.75, we would not have needed as many steps. We would have gotten a more accurate route much faster.